There has been a lot said about this year's NBA draft class. There's people calling it one of the weakest classes in history. There's people saying this is like drafting Tobias Harris first overall. There's people saying this is like selecting in the draft after they chopped off the top five picks. But at the top of the list, as far as controversial player goes, it's absolutely Zach Eady. So I want to bring in why this seven foot plus monster from Purdue, if he makes any sense for this Sixers team and why there is a unique connection with Nick Nurse that I do think is important to note here. So what we dive right into, I want to begin by looking at his measurements and just what a massive human being that this guy is. So to take a look at his combine measurements here, he measured in at seven foot three and three quarter inches, weighed just a shade under 300 pounds, a seven foot 10 and three quarters of an inch wings span and a standing reach of nine foot seven and a half mind you the basket is 10 feet tall do not forget that there he is the tallest player the longest wingspan and has the highest standing reach of any player in this class now i don't think that's a major surprise to anyone that the raw physical skills and traits that he does possess is the biggest reason why he is on the radar and as controversial as he is and i will lead this conversation by saying that following last year leading into the season I thought there was no world in which Zach Eady could be an NBA player. After this season, I'm kind of convinced he can, that I do believe there is something there. I do believe he's improved his footwork enough that he leverages his skills, his size, his frame in a way that could be effective at the next level. That does not mean that he does not have to make adjustments in his game. He absolutely has to. He's not going to be able to be this post presence, this guy that the ball is constantly dumped down into the way that was the case in college. But there is something there, and I do think that's worthy to note. And to dive into what exactly that is, let's just take a look at his stats and how dominant that he was throughout his college career. The two-time national player of the year. This season, he averaged 25.2 points per game, 12.2 rebounds, 2.2 blocks per game. He did have 2.3 turnovers, but he also limited his fouls to just 1.3 fouls per game. Shot 62.3% from the field overall. He only attempted two three-pointers on the year, of which he went one for two on. But a point that I do think is notable here is getting to the free throw line 11.1 or 11.2 times per game and connecting on 71.1% of it. That is very notable there that it is a skill for big men to be able to knock down free throws and we've seen throughout basketball history that when a guy can't a team will let you know about it the hack a shack tactic that type of thing that will not fly for Zach Eady and it's also bears well for what his potential shooting outlook could be and Edie's been pretty open about his skill set as a whole that he is a guy that seems hungry is ready to make the NBA leap he did go through the combine process last year ultimately pulled his name out of the hat which I do think was the right decision and then like myself I think a lot of NBA teams have changed their mind a little bit on Edie but I did want to talk about a little bit about his comments at the combine I loved what I heard from him, that when asking about some players that he models his game after, he mentioned that he could be like an Avika Zubak type player, that type of category of big man, which I do think is a cool outlook to have, that he's willing to do whatever. And there are two specific quotes that I do want to pull up here. Number one, he was asked on making the transition from a star at Purdue to a potential role player. Edie says, every team needs someone to hold down the paint. You need someone to grab rebounds. You need someone to block shots. You need someone to finish lobs. You need someone to do those things. Not everything has to be me with the ball in my hands in a post-up. I think I can do a lot of things. At Purdue, there were a lot of post-ups, but if you really watch the game, it was a lot of ball screens. That's what you want at the NBA. Ball screens, hard cut actions, seals, repost. Like it's a a lot of stuff playing off off a ball screen. That's the NBA. Asked about how he's improved in the pick and roll, which I would say is probably the biggest concern in his game. Edie says, that was the one thing I heard. Just be a good screener. I think people undervalue. They don't realize how good it is just to wipe out whoever is guarding the ball. Screening hard, rolling hard, carving out my space. I think that's what I worked on all year, and that really helped my game. So some cool quotes there. And I will say, I think the defensive side of the pick and roll is probably the larger concern in this game. That that really, in today's NBA, essentially makes or break a backup center. That a guy, if they can hold up in pick and roll coverage, because you are going to get tested, that immediately when they do see that new new player checking into the game, they have you circled, they're calling a ball screen, and they're making you defend in some sort of 2v1 setting. That is what Zach Eady is going to be asked to do. And I do give him a puncher's chance here. And the reason for that is is his massive frame, that I think he can play drop coverage in a way where he leverages his wingspan, leverages his height to make life hard on both defenders. And in certain team concepts, it's not going to be perfect for every single situation, but in the right team concept, that can be effective defense. 
Now, the other main question with Zach Eady, which kind of has been touched on here, it is the shooting. That we have not seen a large sample size of him shooting jumpers, of him attempting three-pointers, none of those things. That only two three-pointers attempted this year, and I believe he did not attempt a single one any other year. So that is the question. But Edie knows that himself, has been open about it, and believes in himself in that area. So to dive into what he said about that, he was asked about his shooting ability, and Edie said, quote, I've always said I can shoot. Like, you can see it from the free throw line. Obviously, I haven't gotten those in-game reps, but I've always believed that I can shoot, and if I'm asked to, I can fill a role like that. Like I said, it all depends on what I'm asked to do. On why he didn't shoot more jump shots at Purdue, Edie said, quote, It was never really a conversation with Coach Matt Painter. To be honest, I talked to him. I knew that if I did shoot it, he's not going to scream at me for shooting a three every now and then, but I just like to do things the right way. I believe to help Purdue best, I just go to the post and just get just to get in the flow. And in defense of Edie here, that is the way that Purdue was constructed, is that he was the epicenter of their offense, he was the dump down to the post, and then they surrounded him with shooters, the Fletcher Lawyers of the world, the Lance Jones of the world, these were all guys that were knocking down three-pointers on the catch-and-shoot looks, and where where they made this team do the dance was, you're either sending to it Zach Edie and freeing up a three-point shooter, or you're leaving him in one-on-one in the post, and he's going to make you pay in that situation. So I do believe what Edie's saying here, that this was more of a, a choice on what was best for the team rather than him, his specific skills. And we have seen a little bit of video of him shooting three-pointers at the combine that I did want to pull up here because it does look a little bit impressive. So let me pull that up right here. Now, I know you can't read a ton from standstill shooting drills that you take the worst player in the NBA and they're still going to shoot every average person out of the gym by a major margin. I mean, it, if you want proof of that, just go watch an NBA warm up and take the backup center off the bench. Take a look at Dwayne Dedman or DeAndre Jordan going through shooting drills and they're going to be knocking down just about everyone. I used to watch George Niang do warm ups before Sixers games and he would literally go through a complete shooting arc on the three point arc, would not miss a single shot. And while George Niang is obviously a very good shooter in the context of things, that he's not the not above, above average NBA player. So I will say that just for frame of reference here. But the fact that we are seeing a little bit of evidence that Zach Eady can shoot the ball, that there does feel to be a little bit of touch there, that is really just great to see. That, that does paint an optimistic lens. Now, the last point that I ma mainly wanted to hit on here is I do think it's notable to talk about the history between Zach Eady and Nick Nurse. That we know that Nick Nurse spent time at, up in Toronto coaching the Raptors for a period of time. He also took a part and coaching with Team Canada, and Zach Eady is Canadian, which gave Nick Nurse a chance to coach him firsthand. And he was asked about this on the Colin Cowherd show, in which he said, quote, I love him. He's super competitive, Colin. Really a super hard worker. He's out there every day working. He's out there every day playing. Like, there's a lot to like about this guy. And he also went on to tell a little bit of a funny story, talking about his first time coaching Edie when Edie was just 18, playing for the under-18s at that point in time. So he, he must have been 17 or whatever the case was. But that Edie was just giving the team some serious issues. That his size, his frame, nobody had any clue what to do with. And Nurse is like, we seriously considered bumping him up to the main squad and bringing us with us. But he was a guy that... I made clear was a long-term part of the program and deservingly so because he is going to be a problem and is now a future NBA player on the brink of it. I'll also point out that Edie's been dealt a raw hand that he has not been, a been able to capitalize on any of this NIL money because he's a Canadian citizen and there's a little loophole in which he's not allowed to accept it from that. So very disappointing there. So he will be looking for this NBA bag pretty badly there. But with Nick Nurse speaking highly of it, I do think that is relevant to note because currently it seems like the ballpark for where Zach Eady will be drafted, Eady himself said he's hearing between 10 and 25, well, the Sixers hold the 16th pick. And if you are making that pick, what is the belief? It's that Zach Eady can be the long-term backup center for this team. Do I feel awesome about that? Probably not, but I do think he's a unique guy. I think it would be interesting to have a little one-two punch where it is Zach Eady and Paul Reed, where you can kind of pick the matchups with that type of thing. But this isn't a pick that I'm rushing to make if I am the Sixers. I do think Zach Eady's too big to fail. I think that he ultimately finds his stride in the NBA, finds a lane in which he can run in. I don't think we're ever looking at talking about Zach Eady as an all-star, talking about Zach Eady as maybe even a starting level center. But I do think that there's too much talent there. There's too much size. And it does seem like a guy that wants it far more than he's given credit. That I think he has an NBA head on his shoulder in which he's willing to work hard. He's willing to accept whatever his role is necessary. So I will be rooting for the guy. I think there's a much more negative outlook for Zach Eady than does 
deserves to be the case, but that does not mean that I am pounding my fists and, and screaming to see him in a Sixers uniform. Frankly, I think this pick is better served on a guy like Devin Carter or even Khalil Ware or a couple of other guys that I will be breaking down on this channel. Devin Carter remains at the top of my list there. Or just flipping this pick for an Alex Caruso or a, a guy that can help right now on the Sixers team. That, to me, feels like a better use of asset. But if the Sixers do go this direction, I will think that Nick Nurse played a role in that. So it will be interesting to see what here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you believe Zach Eady can be an NBA talent? Do you believe this guy can hang and carve out an NBA career in the long run? I do want to hear from you guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning into this video here. Make sure you are smashing that subscribe button, dropping a like on this video, and leaving your thoughts below. And I'll be back talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.